Welcome to The Sarah Scoop Show. I'm your host, Sarah Roman, here to give you the scoop on all of your favorite things. Today we have Glenn Garcia, who is a house con- you are a, a house contestant on Big Brother. So yeah. Glenn, tell us a, a little te- bit. A temporary house guest. A temporary, <laughs> right. So anyone that watched knows Glenn didn't have a, a very long stay, but we still love to hear about like how you I, I had more time in sequester than I did in the house. <laughs> yeah. so- what was the whole process like when you went? What, like, were you a super fan? What encouraged you yeah, to go? Yeah, definitely, house? definitely a huge super fan. I've been watching it with my family for years. They even got my daughter watching it now, so she's really into it. And uh, the main thing just came back that I, you know, I did it because everybody thought I couldn't do it. Right. And, and that's what happened. I just went in and did the whole process like everybody else. Went online, did the video. And then next thing you know, I got a call for the open call and I went down. So like, it was just a snowball effect. Right. So what do you think? Like, I mean, a lot of people have been asking the other people I've interviewed, they're asking like, what advice do you have if they want to follow in your steps? Best advice. The best advice I could give is be yourself. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to be like a character. Don't try to be what they want to see is you, the best you and what you're about. That's the best advice I can give. So when you got that Big Brother key and you went into the house, I'm sure that you anticipated staying a lot longer. So how... I would have if my team would have listened to me on the puzzle. And, you know, there's a lot of things, but what can you say? Well, what would you tell yourself if you were going to go back in the house? How would you play the game? Would you do things differently? Would you... Yeah, I would have to do a completely different scheme than what I was going to go in. You know, I was going to go in as that dumb old guy who didn't know, you know, the game and just play dumb. And now, like, I wasn't going to let nobody know about my prior uh, employment when I, I was a New York City detective. So I was just telling everybody that I was just a dog groomer and I was going to just lay low and act, you know, like I didn't know nothing. So that was my game plan going in the first time. If I ever got the opportunity to go back in, now I'm exposed. Everybody knows what I did for a living, what I do. So I would have to change it up. So was the dog groomer something you actually do? I know you were the detective before. So was the dog groomer something you do currently? Or was that just a facade? Currently, no. That's what I do. I I, I, say, I thought, I said, I don't want to deal with the animals of the street anymore. I'd rather deal with these animals. And I'm a, I'm a big dog guy. I love dogs. And it was something that I just used to do as a hobby. And it was just something that I used to just enjoy doing, my dogs, family members' dogs, and stuff like that. And then when I uh, retired, I thought about it, and I said, you know what? I said, maybe I could do something to keep myself busy. And I went to school, and I just thought I was going to be a business owner, but I wound up being really good at what I was doing. And everybody started saying, no, I don't want that room. I want you. You're the one my dog likes. You're the one that – and, you know, it just snowballed, and I enjoyed doing it. So you went into the house just saying, like, Hey guys, I'm a dog groomer. You were leaving the past, all the detective work, all the New York police behind you. Cause did you not want to be seen as a threat having all that experience? I just figured, yeah, they might think and well, some people have a bad opinion of police officers. So right away I could have had a I could have had that against me. Then I they would have said, Oh, well, this guy was a narcotics detective. Oh well he knows how to scheme, he knows how to do this and all of that. So then they would have made play, you know, they would have paid a little bit more attention to me and the way I was playing to know if I was gonna be, you know lying or not. I pretty much did that as for a living. So Right. So you were there how many days were you actually in the house then? I was in there for exactly twenty seven hours. That was one of the trivia questions on the show that season. How many hours was Glenn in the house? Twenty seven hours exactly. So did people start pairing up like immediately or do you feel like it was more like were people coming into the house and they're starting to partner up right away? Well, believe it or not, I, as soon as I went in, I linked up. I had a crew. There's a lot of a lot that you guys didn't see because they didn't show the live feeds until a week later. And by that time, I was already out of the house. But when I went in, I already started working. I already had my plan. I had my team already. I was already making my moves. I was so happy when I was going into that house because half of the cast didn't know anything about Big Brother. 
And I was licking my chops going, oh, my God, I'm just going to steal all these kids in the wrong direction. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm like, and then Julie comes out with the beautiful twist that the teams and all of a sudden these vets start popping out of the boxes. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. I was like, just what I didn't want started happening. Yeah. So do you think like there's something that could have gone different than for you? Or was it just kind of like it all just came and you were like, no, well, well truthfully, I'm yeah. Well, it sucked because who wants to be on teams? This, I, you know, I never joined this. I never applied for Big Brother for a team concept. I wasn't going to an amazing race. I wasn't going to that. I wanted to go to use my personal skills and to use what I know, you know, and my social skills on how do I figure I could have manipulated these young kids because a lot of them, listen, the closest person in age to me was 30 years younger. And that was Tiffany. She was 30. You know, so it, it was like, it was crazy. But the team twist killed me. It just, it actually killed me. And then the team that I had, I, even though I love them all now, we're very good friends. Um, you know, we, we didn't have much time because it was challenge after challenge after challenge. It was right after that, within the 27 hours, we did four challenges. And that determined on who went home. And, you know, it's just because on the... I don't know if you remember the series because it's you know a little while back, but the part that we had to build a puzzle, mm -hmm. I was the one telling the whole cast, and I get this from everybody and everybody on social media and everybody because they remember hearing it. They're like, Glenn was right. Like, why didn't they listen? You know, Glenn was right. I, I knew it was wrong, and I was telling them, but nobody wanted to listen to me till the last minute. So, you know, you can't cry over spilled milk, but I would have just took the initiative and just said, this is wrong. Let's do this, do that. I tried to be a team player, and it bit me in the ass. What can you do? Yeah. No, I mean, it's hard. That's, I feel like, kind of the risk of going in there. It's like you don't know what they're going to show. And obviously, you were, like, prepared. You had watched the show. You knew all about it. Did you do anything else to prepare? Well, to be honest with you, I through the process, I never knew I was going to be on the show. Oh, okay. It's such a long process. Like, I would have trained and I would have, you know, done stuff in knowing. They never let you know. And they never tell you how you're doing. The only thing you do is, oh, you made the next step. Or well, you made the next step. So, like, I never, the minute I knew that I was in the house was the day that they brought me in blindfolded. And I met, and I met, uh, did my interview with uh, Jeff. And oh. I opened my eye and they took a blindfold of me. I looked at him and I saw Jeff and I went, Jeff. And he was like, hey, what's up, man? And I was like, and I looked around and I went, is this the, and he goes, yeah, this is the diary room. And I was like, Am I on the show? Like, and he was like, dude, you're in. And I was like, right there is when I know. All the way leading up to that point, I had no clue because, you know, you, you talk and you read about alternates and, you you know, you might be taken as an alternate. You might do this. So you don't know anything. And they never, they would never would say, Glenn, you're in the house. They would just say, you know, looking really good. You know, they hinted around it, but never told me exactly. So that interview with Jeff, you see how I'm so bubbly and giggly? It's because I just realized that I was in the house. That's awesome. So then do you, so you're there because like obviously you go through the casting process and then you go home and then we see you get a key at your house. And so is that like, I mean, you know, but all of that. No, like, you still don't know because what they do, they, they, they fool you. When okay. I, when they said they were going to send the, you know, people over at that point, I think they said I was, I made the top either 25 or 30. So they, that's all they tell you. Oh, listen, congratulate. You made it to this point. What we're gonna yeah. do is send. We're gonna send a camera crew, okay, you know, to your home to do the film. So I'm like saying, oh, so I knew it. Right? Like, so this is the part where I get the key, blah blah blah. And they say it doesn't mean you're in the house. They said what happens is now we picked. They, they picked uh, like 25, 30 people. It was. Yeah. They said now it's up to CBS to pick who they want in the house. So I'm like, okay. And then they said, I said, but does this mean that you know? They're like, no. This means. That we're getting everybody prepared. Everybody's going to do the same thing. And then if they do pick you, we already have a film. And I oh. was like, and I was like, are you serious? I was like, so that's why I was like, ah, yeah, I got the key. Like, they're like, yeah, you're in. I'm like, yeah, okay. But they never really tell you that you're in. Yeah. So then you found out you're in. You go to the house. Like, well, that's what? the only way you find out you're in is then when they, they kidnap you. Oh, okay. So they, they kidnap you and they say, you got an hour. And that's legit. So what did you, you put in your bag? You got just, an hour. Whatever, whatever clothes, you know, every, you know, you could get and everything. And that's when they say, say you goodbye to your family. And, you know, so, you know, it's, it's like they almost scoop you up so quick 
that you don't even have time to really let it settle settle in and like sink in and you're like and at that point all right i knew i was that close but they still don't tell you that you're in like when i was being sequestered i'm like am i and they're like well we can't really tell you and i was like oh my god it's killing me <laughs> killing me so you i mean was this like on your bucket list of things to oh do hell yeah <laughs> hell yeah i wanted this so bad and then when it just fell in it was just kept falling in falling in and the key was that it was just myself and they you know they I guess they liked my personality. They liked what I was about, you know. Like, you know, my whole catchphrase was what that I went from I went from kicking ass to cleaning ass. Yeah. And they just started laughing with that, and they just opened the doors, and I guess the rest is history. So, do you still like? I know you don't spend a lot of time in the house, but you are still part of the cast and everything. So, do you still talk to those people that Everybody. you live with? Almost, almost my whole cast. We're all still great friends. And the thing is, that's great is that past alumni you know like i guess you know alumni from big brother other they've all been open arms and friendly with me and you know it's 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 really cool it's a it's a it's a club that i'm really you know happy to be in and and you know honored because i'm such a fan yeah no that's great do you have any um challenges that you watch in the other seasons or anything that you really look at and wish oh i wish i would have done that oh a I lot of them a lot of the strength everything that i had to do that that got me out was balance. It was right. that was so well, you know, I lost on that island. That island was so geared to anybody who's really, really thin, you know, because if you feel, you step one way to the left, the whole thing went to you know, it bottomed out. The other, you know, the other way bottomed out. Everything was geared to balance, balance, balance. And you know, and I was a stockier and I was, you know, and and you know, bigger guy than the rest of them. So it wasn't to my advantage, it was to their advantage. But if they were gonna anything with strength, anything with nothing, you know. I would have rocked it, but what can you do? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't really know. I guess that's part of it. And you, I mean, we see like there's a twist or different things like that. But as a house guest, like, isn't that true? Like, you really don't know what's coming. You don't know. You don't know. It, it's it's crazy. And you know, it, I, like, I, if I would have known, if I would have been, if they would have been like, listen, you you know, you're going to, what do you think? I would have, I would have. I would have geared up. I would have trained. I would have cardio. Like I, you know, went to the gym and all of that. But I didn't do nothing thinking I was getting the house because you gotta understand. I had applied years ago to Survivor, okay, uh, for season two, and for the Australian Outback, and uh -huh. I was picked. I was going as far as I knew. I was going. I went through almost the whole process, medicals. I did everything, and I had my bags packed and I was waiting. And they say we're gonna send you back. Then they did it differently. Well, at least different than Big Brother does. And they sent me. They said you're gonna get your plane tickets, and you're, you're gonna get like a FedEx telling you everything, what to do, and all of that. And I was waiting that weekend, waiting, waiting, waiting. And at the last, last minute, they cut me. And oh, I got a letter saying, I got a letter saying, unfortunately, you know, when we build a cast, it's it's like putting pieces to a puzzle, and your piece was just a little bit more, more, you know, extreme than the other ones because you are at the time I was an active, you know, police officer. You know, like because you're right. a police officer and the people might you know take that as authority and they might want to listen to you more than other people and you know and i got cut so after that i was so heartbroken and i was so devastated that i never wanted to apply nothing else and those are my two favorite shows the survivor and big brother so when big brother came around i was like i'm not gonna get my hopes up i'm not gonna get my hopes up i'm not gonna get my hopes right. up and that's what happened i didn't never thought i was gonna go yeah you're just kind of doing it, hoping for it, but what you just weren't really sure. So yeah. would Survivor be something that you are still hoping to do someday or you kind of like retire? Yeah, I would, I would, I would, I would do it if they asked me. Yeah, I would do it. Uh, but I still, I have, I have, uh, I have a score with Big Brother that I have to, I like, you know, it didn't, listen, I never got voted out. I never uh, met Julie. I never, you know what I mean? Like it, it's a bucket list that I said, if I would have got voted out, like Cameron did in the last season. He went out quick on first night, but at least they voted him out. You right. understand? Like they said, they put him on the block and they voted him out. If that would happen to me and I got voted out, I would shake everybody's hand. Hey, I did what I had to do and it's time to go. And I would have yeah. been cool with it. But the way I went out, I wasn't happy with it. Yeah, because you feel like you didn't really get that big brother exit. No, I didn't get the ex exit. I didn't get voted because believe it or not, I wouldn't have got voted out because I had asked. It was something that, that irked me for so long. And every time I see my people that are on my cast, I would tell them, 
hey, listen, if this happened, if it came down, me and Corey, the last two people that were on the island are automatically on the block. Who would you have voted? Every single one of them said they would have voted for Corey out because Corey was the younger, stronger guy. Right. And at that time, they wouldn't have known you know, still what I was doing. I was going to lay low. So everybody said, Klein, we would have voted him out. We weren't going to vote you out. Right. And you got to understand the, the, the time that I was in there, I, I befriended everybody. I was the cook. I cooked dinner for the first night for everybody, for all, all of us. We had like a great night. It was like, but you know, none of you guys ever seen this. And everybody was like, the first night after I, I was laying down, Frank was laying next to me. It was in our room. It was, we were the anime room. It was me. Paul was in the middle and Frank was on the, on the side. Frank turned around. He looked at me. He went, I know what you're doing. I was like, what? I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, listen to me. From my season, I know. He goes, no one gets rid of the cook. And I was like, <laughs> and, I was, and I was like, I was just like playing dough, you know, like, really? I was like, no, I just wanted to cook. And he was like, he looked at me, he was already on my game. He was like, I know you, I know. And I was like, and I was just playing dumb. But, you know, I was already had the wheels in motion, yeah. but no one ever got to see anything that I was doing. And, you know, and that's unfortunate, you know? So do you then, I mean, you obviously went in with a strong social game. Is that what you think? Do you think that's how people win their social game? Or do you think it's more physical or well, like- the way the way it's going now, it's it's kinda kinda of like it's kinda of like depressing like because people are, are taking it personal. Yeah. And people aren't giving respect for the game. Like I respect the Big Brother game. Like both with celebrity and with the last season with Josh and Paul. Josh was good. Josh had a great you know, social skill and all of that. But Paul played the game, you know? And I always always say, I would give it, hey, you got me out, shame on me. But you know what? You played a better game than me, and I got to give you the respect, and I would vote for you. You know? Same thing this season. Ross played Big Brother. And mm -hmm. I felt Ross was more deserving. But when people get, when they vote with their heart, and like, oh, well, you lied to me. Well, hey, hello, it's Big Brother. Come on. You're yeah. going to get lied to. You get That's part of playing the game. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I wish that we put that would give more credit to gameplay than being, you know, a bitter jury, as they say. But yeah, I would have been I tell everybody, everybody now on social media when they meet me, glad we loved you, we loved you. I said, You love me because you only seen me on what, six, five or six episodes. I'm <laughs> like, I guarantee everybody that if I would have stayed longer, people were gonna hate me because I was gonna play the game of Big Brother and I was gonna do what I had to do. So yeah. You know, I, I am like, yeah, I would have been good until I had to do what I had to do. And, you know, nobody ever got to see that side of it. So hopefully, fingers crossed, you never know. And you were, I mean, you were there, like, when, to win the game, to play. Yeah, the I was there. Listen, I didn't need no friends. Yeah. They would have been fake friends. You know, like, I would have been, I would have been doing what I had to do to win. I needed to make this money, come home, came home, you know, like, I did all the interviews. They were like, Glenn, so what'd you do it for? You know, half of the, half of the cast was like, we're doing it to... Further our modeling career, we're gonna act. We're gonna do that. They say, "Glenn, what do you want? What do you want to win the money for?" I said, "To get out of debt." And then, <laughs> and then, I said, to, have the, "To get out of debt." They were like, "Wow, that's like a, I'm like the first real answer." Half of these people still lived home with their parents, you know. And I was like, I had a goal, so I was ready. I, you know, I was driven. But how do you feel then? Like I know you say, if you got the chance, you go back. Um, like you know, watching the last season. If you went into the house, like, why would these people want to keep a vet whenever they've already played the game? Listen, like, how do you feel about that? Paul, Paul, and listen, I hated vets in, yeah. just like in my season. I was the one who started. It was me, Paul, Jose, Bronte, and Victor. I was the one who corralled everybody because half of them didn't know the show. And I said, these guys know the game. These guys know what slop is like. We have to get the vets out. And we started corralling around getting the vets out, getting the vets out, getting the vets out. So now, and because I hate a vet because they have that edge. They already know. So now, you know, I don't know how I love Paul the death. Paul's one of my, one of my, one of, the, one of the nicest guys. When he got in, I said, he ain't less than a week. Who the hell is going to keep this guy? Yeah. You know, I was like, Who, who's going to keep him? He's too good. And look what happened. You know what I mean? So, hey, you never know. But technically, I don't know if I would. I, I don't know if you could call me a vet because I was only in the house for twenty-seven hours. But it would be you great to get back in, there. huh? I said you were there. It counts. Yeah, I walked through that door. I was on stage. <laughs> That's great. Um, you've been such a pleasure to talk to. Thank you so much. I want to just leave with uh, anything you want to say to like 
future Big Brother hopefuls or people that follow your journey? Like anything that you want to just tell people? Just, uh, you know, follow your dreams, man. If you really, really want it, go for it. And just because if you don't make it the first time, I was lucky. You know, the first time I applied and I got in. But there was people on, on my cast and after knowing other people from the Big Brother, you know, in industry, a lot of them applied three, four, five, six, you know, seven times. Don't give up. If you really, really want it, you got to do what you have to, you know, you have to do. Just be yourself, though. They don't want a character. They don't want, they don't want you, like, being somebody. Just be yourself. Be true to yourself and just let them see the best in you. And that's the best way you're going to get in. So that's all. That's the best advice I could give. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Glenn. Thank you.